All right, so it is the night before the ACT exam, so let's talk about cramming. I'm gonna try to keep this video as short and simple as possible because you have a limited amount of time and you don't wanna waste time considering you have an exam tomorrow that you should be studying for instead of watching YouTube videos. So let's provide you with the most advice that we can in the least amount of time so you can make the most of your time that you have. All right, there's a few things that I would recommend you do in the cramming scenario to make the most of the study time that you have left to at least optimize your score a little bit more if possible. There's a few different things that I did when I was in your shoes before I took my five ACT exams that I took in high school, which is way too many, but that's besides the point. Again, I'm not here to waste your time to talk about those things. What exactly did I do before those five times and what did I see uh, as, as things that worked? That's what we're gonna be focusing on. So there's a few things. Let's just get into them right now because I don't wanna waste any more time here. The first thing is you wanna practice. Don't practice too much, don't practice too little. Again, what exactly does that look like? Usually between half to one practice exam. I really like sticking to half practice exam, meaning you do two sections at the very most. Again, if you do more than that, you are putting yourself at risk of getting tired. You don't wanna burn yourself out, especially the night before the test. That's not a good idea. Also, if it's like 9 p.m. and you're watching this video, then you probably don't wanna stay up too late tonight because you have to wake up tomorrow pretty early. Some of you guys have to drive really far because your test center might be ridiculous distance away from you because of you know the situation that we're in um so keep those things in mind don't sleep too late that kind of thing so again don't practice too much that's my point here but again you don't want to just not practice at all either i recommend practicing a little bit just to get a bit of a refresher the benefit of this is that a you know if it's english if it's english or math that you're practicing you're going to get uh, a bit of a refresher on the skills that you might be struggling with or the the kind of mistakes that you don't want to be making that you made before uh, in addition, if it's if it's reading science that you're practicing that you're kind of struggling with, then it's a matter of just practicing that strategy for reading or skimming or whatever it is. Just practicing it one more time to get a, a last minute, you know, just rundown of, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And you're putting it in stone like this is what my strategy is. That's what I'm going to go with. And you just stick to it. So that's one last chance to practice, to get used to your strategies and to just put it on paper, see how you would do if you took the ACT exam right now. All right. If you do good, if you do great, that's great. If you do terrible, it is what it is. It's the night before, what can you do? I'm not gonna recommend just taking a bunch of practice exams over and over again until you get a good score because that's not realistic. And again, you don't wanna waste your time and waste your sleep as well, because that's problematic, right? You wanna actually wake up tomorrow morning. All right, what's the next thing? So the next thing is probably, you could even do this before you practice, is to review your practice exams. I talk about this a lot and it seems like a challenging strategy in terms of like, it might seem like, oh, reviewing stuff, it's a waste of time. I don't feel like doing it, you know, this, this and that. The only reason I recommend doing this is because you have a limited amount of time left and you need to improve as much as possible without putting in long hours of practice, right? The best way that you can do that is by reviewing the mistakes you've already made instead of making more mistakes and trying to learn from them. You've already taken past practice exams. Ideally, if you haven't taken any practice yet, then that's problematic, but if, I mean, there's, that's a different scenario, but I'm gonna assume you've done a, at least a little bit of practice. If you've, already, if you've already done some practice, then you have some evidence of where you're sitting at, of what kind of mistakes you've made already. You can learn from those. You can get a refresher on what those mistakes are so you don't make those mistakes again. It's very important that you do that so that you don't keep like just spinning out and burning out and like just making those mistakes over and over again because that's what's gonna keep your score from improving. If this is the target score that you have and this is the score that you're at, this gap right here is the mistakes that you keep making. So you need to, if you wanna stop making those mistakes, if you wanna learn from those mistakes, you have to obviously go over them. Whether it's certain skills that you're struggling with or if it is, you know, like certain strategies that you just can't understand. I've talked about this in the other videos that we did in this series where you need to, you know, I, I recommended practicing, you know, I gave you a certain amount, I gave you a study plan. If you watch those first couple videos, this is the last of, those, of, the, of the video series. But like I talked about, you know, that's why you need to get that initial practice in so you can learn from the mistakes that you're making. Uh, and if you're not doing that, then it's very hard to improve. You're just kind of just spinning out, like doing a, doing like, it's like a car that's doing a burnout and it's not really going anywhere. You're doing a bunch of work, you're putting in all this time and energy, nothing's happening, you're not moving, right? So make it a point to learn from mistakes. It's very important. Again, I know it seems kind of bland, like why am I doing this? But it'll help you if you put some time into it, put some effort into it, maybe, maybe even take some notes on how the strategies went, how the skill, like what skills you were doing better or worse on, um, or what problems, what, what skills are being tested in each problem uh, to see like patterns between your exams. So again, that's something you could have done, like if you have a set of practice exams that you haven't really gone over yet, that's something you could do. It'll really help you get familiar on the types of things that you're struggling with. Um, and it's, it's a very underestimated strategy. That's why I recommend that, okay? And I wish I did more of that when I was practicing. All right, the third thing you need to, so just as a summary of what we talked about so far, first of all, you need to practice. We talked about one practice exam at the very most, because if you do more then you're gonna waste exams, you're gonna get tired. 
Uh, and I also talked about you want to review your past exams, okay? Especially the ones that you take very that you took very recently. But again, all the practice, past practice exams, if you have the ability to review your results, review those exams, you know, especially going over skills, trying to understand how the strategies went. If you have, if you remember, then that's very, very important, okay? The third thing is, is that it's that you want to finally like decide what your strategies are for timing and especially for reading science like skimming versus reading okay timing strategy wise this is just something that you've practiced again and again so for example you have certain certain choices you can make like for math you can decide okay i'm just going to do one minute per question i definitely don't recommend doing that but if that's what you've been practicing the whole time and that's something that works for you then you need you need to make that decision finalized like at that point night, the night before you're going to decide I'm doing one minute per question, that's it. I'm not gonna change it up, I'm not gonna do something different because the moment you change something that already works, it, it's like a matter of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? You need to figure out what's the best, what's the least broken method for you and you need to stick to that, okay? So choose that. Uh, and so that's for timing, right? So for reading science, the you could also be thinking about what's my approach that I'm gonna be using. So that could be like, am I gonna be doing skimming? Am I gonna be doing some form of passage glancing? I've done a video on the five different reading methods. You need to decide which method you're gonna be doing tonight so that you can use it tomorrow and not get confused because if you end up in the reading exam and you're like okay I have these five different methods which one do I choose you're putting yourself in the scenario where there's like a million items on like a restaurant menu and you just you don't end up choosing anything because you're so confused so don't end up in that scenario I know I give you lots of different methods in that video if and I recommend you watch that video to understand the different methods but you're at a point now where you need to just pick and stick like just decide something and leave it at that. Decide the one that you felt the most comfortable with and that gave you the highest score. Actually, that's probably, just do the one that gave you the highest score. That's that's the general rule of thought. All right, because you you're, you're not in a position where you can just practice it and get better at it just overnight by sleeping on it, right? So choose a method, stick to it so you don't get confused on your exam. All right, that's kind of the main like advice that I wanted to give. You know, you can practice a bit, review your stuff so you're familiar with, this, with, with, with where you're at and with the kind of mistakes that you don't want to be making. And, um, you know, the last thing was, you know, decide, make decisions as to what you're doing, what your exam game plan is going to look like, mainly in terms of timing strategies and in terms of the skimming strategies that you should be using on reading and science. And then the last thing I want to do in this video is touch on some do's and don'ts for the actual exam itself. So the first thing is uh, don't waste time on the early math questions because these questions are not the hard questions. There are hard questions at the end of the math exam. You should be giving more time to those. So using the 2040 math timing strategy where you spend the first 20 minutes on the first 30 questions and the last 40 minutes on the last 30 questions is a healthy way to structure that. I recommend you try to, even if you can't get close to the strategy, just try to get as close as possible. Push yourself in that regard and keep a timer so you can keep looking at the timer. That's probably the best advice I can give you in terms of timing. Just keep looking at the clock, not like every 30 seconds, but every few minutes, know where you're at so that you're sticking to your timing goals, all right? Regardless of what section it is. Um, the next thing in terms of do's and don'ts is don't read in depth on reading. Uh, on science, you can do this, I guess, a little bit more, especially on conflicting viewpoints. Uh, but for reading, do not read in depth because it just takes too much time and it's going to take a toll in terms of like, you're just going to be taking in so much information and you're just not going to need a lot of that. So skim, again, if you haven't tried skimming at all, then it might be a bit too late to try and implement something. You can try practicing it tonight, you know, maybe after this do a reading exam, see how you see how you fare on the, on the skimming approach. But if you've never done it before, it's hard for me to say you, you, that you should do it because the whole point behind skimming is that, first of all, it's not natural for a lot of students, especially not me. I did not get it at first. It takes practice and you don't have time to practice. So just something to keep in mind. Um, again, you can try it. I'm not gonna say just I'm not gonna say don't jump into it because it's like jumping into the deep end of a pool if you don't know how to swim. So just keep that in mind. But I would generally not recommend reading slowly. That's my main thing. Like you can read in depth. Don't read slowly. Like if you're taking more than four minutes to read a passage, that's a bit problematic because it's going to really compromise your ability to answer every question with an even amount of time or have the best chance to get every question right, all right? Keep that in mind. And then the last advice that I'm going to give you is kind of a hot take, um, and it's to not read the questions first on reading science. I know a lot of people recommend this, especially for science, like, you know, when you get into a passage, like people will say, you know, oh, the answers are just kind of like, they're just in the graphs, so you shouldn't even look at the passage, just kind of look at the graphs maybe, and then go to the questions, or just go to the questions right away and look at the graphs when you need to. Uh, my thing is that sometimes you're going to get really long passages, especially on the newer ACT exam where you have six passages as opposed to seven. Each passage is going to be a bit longer, they're all going to be a bit harder, so there's going to be more information per passage. Passage, meaning that you, there's more potentially that there's going to be asked about from each passage meaning that the passage itself is a little bit more important right for that reason I recommend reading the passage first in science one to two minutes for reading it's two to three minutes 
again, you don't have to use all that time. If you can do it in 30 seconds, do it in 30 seconds. If you can get a basic gist in one minute, do it in one minute. It's fine. I don't care. But look at the passage first because there's an important information there that's not going to be, that's not just going to magically come into your head if you read the questions first. The understanding of the passage is a matter of if, it's a matter of when, not if, right? You don't have to like do it at the beginning. Like, let's say you read the questions first. You're going to end up having to try to understand the passage at, at a later point. It's going to happen, most likely. Again, I, this is an approach. This is not an approach that I recommend or that I tried. I mean, I did try it, but it didn't work for me. So, right, uh, and I, the students that I work with, it doesn't work for them either, most of them. So for that reason, like, you're still going to have to understand the passage. It's just like you're going to have to do it while you're answering questions as opposed to just having it structured at one particular time in the beginning. Uh, so, like, that's up to you. But, like, for me, I, I always recommend, and this is what I've seen work best for most students. That's why I recommend the strategy. I've seen mo most of the students that I've worked with that have improved to near perfect scores, that have improved to 30 plus, 25 plus, they've done the reading the passage first. That's why I recommend this, okay? So keep that in mind. It's not just like me pulling this out of thin air uh, just because of how I feel about something. It's just how I've seen students succeed and, and that's what we recommend. Like if, you, if you're not sure if this works, go to our science video, our very popular one, the, the how to improve science from 19 to 34. You'll see a bunch of comments there about students that use the, and do it for reading as well, the reading video, similar video. We've seen, we've students have had success with the strategy. It works uh, and you can do it too. It's like, it's the natural way to go about it. It's like you understand the information, then you go to the questions and that's just what works for best for most people. So that's why I don't recommend doing questions first. Just do the passage first. It generally works better for if you want to score a lot higher. All right, that's it. That's my set of do's and don'ts. That's my set of, you know, what your game plan should be, your study plan should be the night before. I hope that was helpful. If you need any practice resources, then you can head to the link below. We have six free practice exams. If you need any last prep content, you know, before your exam, we have a cramming plan with practice questions that you can use if you really want to the night before or for a later time if you're taking the ACT exam again. We have plenty of resources on our website that you can use that students have improved up to five to nine points within just a few weeks with. So feel free to check those out as well. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Like our prices are pretty low. We're like TJ Maxx. So that's, that's what I'll say about that. But yeah, best of luck on your exam tomorrow. If you're taking it tomorrow, best of luck on your exam in the future. If you're taking it in the future, um, that's it. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Best of luck. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, leave them on our website. You can ask us questions there. Um, and that's it. See ya.